Hello everyone. In tonight's video I'm going to tie this uh, shuttlecock style emerger. Uh, this is a very versatile fly that can imitate mayflies, caddis flies, midges. It's a very good one and you can use it all year round whenever there is something hatching on the surface and when the fish is sipping something from the surface of course or even not. It's a good searching pattern as well. Uh, regardless of its uh, delicate construction, it's relatively buoyant, so I've been using this one even in a bit faster currents. Uh, the only downside of this one is uh, usually natural colored CDC is not that visible, so maybe uh, you want to incorporate some white CDC feather or maybe some uh, yarn to increase visibility, but let's stick to the basic one and i'll show you a couple of tricks with thread and how to attach cdc wings so it they are like impossible to pull out only if you'd like completely destroy the fly you will be able to pull out those those wings so without any further ado this is going to be a short one uh let's hop into tying uh for start I'm going to place my hook in the vise. This was this one is relatively large. It's size 14, 2487 barbless by Tiemco. Uh, lovely hook, wide gap, curved. Uh, nothing to not to like here about it. Uh, for thread, I'm using UTC Ultra in 70 denier, light olive color, but I'm going to make it a little bit less light, so dark olive. And I'm going to use two CDC feathers. I've been talking in one my uh, when in my previous videos from maybe a year ago about CDC construction. So these triangular ones. So literally, what you need is like when you pull those, when you stroke those barbs, CDC barbs, they will all meet at the tips of the feather. So it is important because later we will use uh, most of the feather. Uh, feather barbs where we're not going to waste much of it uh, so let's just hop into tying uh, it's very useful to, to wax your thread here so what I do is like I take like maybe 30 or 40 centimeters of thread and I just run it through beeswax this is pure beeswax it's not industrial one for fly fishing is literally beeswax that I took from a uh, uh, beekeeper I guess it's the name so after I run it like maybe once or twice if the wax is uh, softer you you want to run it maybe once if it's harder like this one it's relatively hard as you can see I can hardly press it you can either just melt it a little bit uh, or keep it like Davy on, on your finger or just run it a couple of times down the thread. Uh, now I'm stroking it through my fingers, like so. So I want uh, the, the, the role of the wax here is to change the color of the silk, which is, well, silk, uh, this thread, uh, which is less important. More important is that it uh, acts like a bonding agent meaning that it keeps those fibers together, keeping them stronger. Uh, when you keep this thread flat, it's at the weakest point at this, uh, when it's flat. It, of course, has its advantages if it's flat for tying, but if you twist it and cord it, it becomes stronger. Uh, something similar happens with uh, with uh, wax. So it makes your thread stronger and more resilient to throat's teeth, which is quite a good advantage uh, with something uh, as sensitive as this UTC thread sometimes. I'm gonna start with the reverse jam hitch simply by placing thread against the hook from my side, from near side, and then tag angles below and over the hook. And then you just start wrapping the thread with your bobbing holder on the hook and after three four reps it's relatively uh, strong uh, connection so it won't unravel and you just take this tag end transfer it forward and catch it with your thread 
so everything is secured now it's you can only break your thread uh, it is important that as you tie this fly tie it with a flat thread keeping the bulk, bulk to a minimum and then here I'm going to stop exactly one head length more or less um, from the from the from the eye of the hook now look at those feathers they have this curved sides and I want to place them away from each other um, thus uh, this provides me with more surface tension when you look at those feathers from below so from this angle if you put them concave side to concave side they're going to be more streamlined if you do the opposite so you, you put con concave to convex side then they will uh, lean outwards and they will actually uh, have and they will uh, occupy more surface and it will be more uh, buoyant fly will be more buoyant now keeping those feathers like this rotate them 90 degrees so literally like this and mount them like that now I want my tips aligned and by holding here at the bottom this is the quill the white part here is the quill it goes into the meat stroke all those barbs up stroke them up trying to catch all of them because we want to use all of them and as you can see they are all aligned at the tips so now you can measure the hook length or a little bit more and transfer the measure here use pinch and loop so catch it between your fingers and go below and pull up and tighten it is important to tighten up because it won't rotate around your hook after a couple of reps everything is secured as you can see here check if you are satisfied with length with proportions and then cut this by a very shallow angle so you would you want longer taper okay like so keep those ends you will need them for later now again with flat thread flat thread is important because it occupies it's wider more room meaning it's much easier for you to catch all those materials as you go rearwards so as you can see i'm catching all the cdc you can slightly overlap the thread so go a revolution pull up revolution pull up revolution pull up this way you will keep all those barbs more or less at the top of the hook okay now the beauty of this fly is that you can actually do whatever you want with it now I can attach rib, I can use another body material, I can use maybe stripped uh, stripped uh, peacock barb, maybe I can use buy it, whatever. But the construction of the wings uh, stays the same. So I'm just gonna create with flat thread, nice and smooth body. And by cutting the CDC at, at this angle that I showed you this helped me a lot so I'm, I'm actually making just this layer and that's, that's it I can increase a little bit of thickness here if I want to imitate a caddis maybe but usually this is all you need so keep it simple and that's that's it so now maybe let's look at this one two reps before those wings stay there don't go anywhere use those longer barbs here pinch them and just with one stroke two strokes maybe attach them to the thread if they are like sticking out that's very good because it will imitate legs so it doesn't have to be tight noodle those barbs sticking away are something that it's desirable at this moment 
Personally, I don't like to have those ants that stay if I pull and strip the, the barb a little bit, I strip the rakis a little bit. So when I have this, I'm just gonna go up and down and that's it. Now, it is important not to cover this end here that we left open, so don't go like this. Don't go there. That's the place you don't want to go because the it will be more difficult for you to form a proper head. Now, I'm going to flatten the thread and do a whip finish now. And that's it. So with flat thread, I'm going to do a whip finish from the wings here to three and then tighten it to the back. Now you can do one thing here. You can start your whip finish at the eye of the hook and then go back one, two, and then go to the eye. Now one, two, three, one rep more than when you were going this way towards the bend. That's very important. Now, when I have nicely formed head, I let me just do it so you can see it. I'm gonna pull on the thread, keep the tension, you can see that I'm moving the hook, and I'm just gonna touch the thread with scissors, and that's it. The tag, if I go close enough, will pull under the knot, and the tag end will be invisible. So you have perfectly formed head perfectly formed with finish and uh, that's it finished fly now a couple of recommendations for this fly if you want to use two feathers that are different colors for example white and natural I recommend you to do it instead of uh, let me show you with scissors instead of this orientation as I did it right now place feathers like this flat and place the white fe the feather, place it first and then natural one on the top of it. Because when this fly goes in the water like so, this side will face you. Because when you cast, your tippet is here. So it, the tippet is facing the fisherman obviously. So you want to expose white feather towards you, not towards the back. I mean, it's useless over there. And because from below, fish will see just a tiny little bit of the fly uh, of the white feather so it won't scare the fish away now the thing I was talking about from the start is uh, if you remember the width that the feather will uh, have uh, and surface tension it will it will occupy if I place those uh, feathers that are going away from each other if they were facing each other like this it will be more narrow and it won't it wouldn't be as buoyant uh, that slight different uh, difference I think it m means a lot and then we have just a couple of those legs sticking out and it's very delicate imitation um, and subtle so I think this is one of the most valuable flies you can have in your box whether you are fishing still water running water, uh, whether you're fishing mayflies, caddisflies or midges. Uh, I do these in range in size sizes from let's say 24 up until 12. 12 is the maximum one I would make because that's what I need on, on the rivers where I fish. Obviously if I had bigger insects I would do bigger bigger flies. Uh, always use them with thinner tippets unless you're fishing bigger immersures uh, because you need delicate presentation for this so guys uh, I hope you liked this video if you did please give it a like subscribe and see you next week